Welcome guys. Today I'm going to do a demo on processes, um, forking, uh, exec, all that sort of stuff. So I hope you guys find this useful. Um, let's jump right into it. So on the left hand side here, you'll see a bunch of programs that I've written. They're also in the GitHub, which I'll put a link to in the description. Uh, it's also on Ed as well. So jumping over to parent.py, um, let's do a run through a really basic example of forking. Uh, and I'll explain what everything does. Okay, so starting with our imports, hopefully that's all good. And we have a variable here called command. You can call it whatever you want, but the important part is what the value is. So we're doing slash bin slash Python three. And this is gonna represent the command we choose to run our programs with. If you wanna run pro, uh, Python program, then you run it with this. If you wanna run it with bash, you run it with this. You know, you can sort of, as long as it's contained within the slash bin directory, you can you can put it here, um, or as long as there's a binary in general. All right, line five, first important command, os.fork. What this does is it takes our process, the one that we're running, parent.py, this whole thing, it takes it and it splits it into two. So now parent.py is now two separate processes, two threads of a process. Now, it's going to return uh, a value and I'm gonna store it in a variable called PID. So when this returns a value of zero, what we say is that this if statement is going to run the child code. It is now the child process. Anything that's above zero is our parent. So this is our parent process and Pretty much else, if it's negative one or below zero, it's an error with the system it can't fork for some reason. So usually we have this if statement, this block here represents our child. So it only has access to these three lines of code. Our parent on the other hand is in this block and it only has access to these three lines of code. Imagine that you're running parent.py and now you've split it into two separate ones, one, one here and one here. Okay. An important thing to note is that os.fork will split into two and that these two will run concurrently. They run at the same time, which is why sometimes you'll get this if statement hitting and this printout coming before this one or this one coming before this one. They're at the same time. So we call this a race condition. Sometimes you don't know which one's going to run first. Um, okay, let's start with the child. So first line here, we just do a quick print and we show os.getPID um, and it prints back this. Let's run it first and we'll see what that prints out. Okay, so the parent managed to run first. I think you'll find that's often the case with Ed. Um, it's not always the case, however. We've got our PID, we've got our child with PID 61, and then we've got these equal signs. So first thing I want to note is that this is 61, not zero like it is here. This is just the return of the fork. The new process that's created has its own PID uh, because it's, it's a new process. This is just our way of separating parent.py into a child and into a parent. If that's a little confusing, don't worry too much. Um, all you have to know is that this, if this returns zero, you're in a child, if it returns above zero, you're in the parent. Let's continue on. So I've got this OS uh, exec v, um, and I'll talk about this command too, but what's happening is we're saying, essentially we're running slash bin slash Python three child.py. Now this is the exact same as just running Python three um, because slash bin slash Python three um, is a, the, 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 the same thing, right? Um, Python 3 is just linked to, so if I go which Python 3, you can see, well, this one's an S bin, but there's also one in slash bin. Anyway, not important. So what we're saying is now that we've got our two processes, our child and our parent, I'm going to os.exec child.py. I'm going to run child.py, this Python program here. I'm going to run it with my command, right? My Python 3 binary. So inside here is our new 
process, our child.py, you can see I print out some equal signs here and here. And we're saying, cool, child.py, new process ID with os.getpid. And you'll notice that they're the same number. Okay. The reason for that is because this is technically the same process. What happens when you call exec is that you take what it was before and you replace it with what it is now. So this child process is going, cool, I'm a child, I'm gonna print this out and then I'm gonna exec and I'm gonna run child.py. I go from child to child.py, this new Python process. The naming might be a little confusing, but what's happening here is that we're replacing our process. That's why they have the same PID. So it goes through and it does some printing. It prints out, I am the new process. I replaced the parent. Um, repair, I replaced parent.py child thread when the exec was called. Just gonna do some sleeping and then I'll exit with exit code 30. So let's talk about this for a sec. Okay, in the parent, what's happening is we're saying, cool, let's print this out. We'll get the PID of the parent. Um, and if I also go print os.getpid here, and I run it again, oopsies, not that one. You'll see that the parent uh, has the exact same process ID as the, the original process itself, this one and the parent here, just to point that out. Okay, so we're gonna go and print this thing out. We're gonna call os.wait. And now this, we're telling the parent to say, wait until the child has completely finished. Wait until after we've split parent child, wait till this one's dead. And then we, we can resume. So, and then once this process is finished, we can see, then it goes ahead and prints out child's finished with exit code 30. But if you see here in the child, I also have sys.exit99. So why doesn't this have 99 here? Well, the, what's happening is that when you run this line, nothing beneath this line will run because we're replacing the process. Excuse me. Replacing the process with this here, this program. Hopefully that makes sense. So anything that you write under here, won't get executed. And I'll just show you that it doesn't anyway. Great, no print statement. Um, that's about all there is to it. So I wanna point out when I call os.wait, it's going to have a return value that I store in this variable called wval. And how I got the exit code was I did wval indexed at one, shuffled to the right, shuffled eight bit shuffle to the right. You don't have to understand this, um, but if you want to, you can play around, print out what wval is. Maybe I'll do that now, wval, and you'll see what it looks like. You'll see that it's a tuple uh, and it has the value 7,680. 7, and when you shuffle that by eight, you get the process code. You can look up why that is, but it's really not that important. Okay, so just to recap, nothing beneath is exact will get run. This is how we replace our process. And these if statements are how we separate our child from our parent. Okay, um, just as another quick example, I've got this little try except uh, here just to show that with the exec family of commands, there's more than one exec command. There's exec L, exec LE, exec v, exec v. The e here stands for environment variables, I'm pretty sure. Um, and if it doesn't, it's a good way to think about it anyway. So the one I probably use the most is exec l. It just means that you list your command and then you list the arguments of that command. Uh, that might be a little confusing the way it's written, um, but perhaps I'll show exec v first. So we list our command, the program we wanna run it with, and then we list our flags. And our command happens to be one of those, uh, one of those arguments we have to pass. That's why it's written twice. Uh, it'll be something that you just get used to. So um, the difference you'll notice between exec L and exec B are these brackets here, here, 
uh, and there's none around these ones. That's the whole difference. You don't have to know anything past that. Uh, and when you add an E onto the end, it just means you can add uh, your environment variables. And our environment variables are how our shell knows specific information. Like what shell am I running? I can go echo shell. And my shell variable, my shell environment variable, which is set on most terminals, you can see when I, I sort of get the value of it with this dollar sign, return slash bin slash bash. And I know that I'm running slash bin slash bash. What about my path? Um, you can see I have my path here. Another really important one that you don't really want to screw around with. Um, there's plenty of them. I think there's also a history maybe, I'm not really sure. No, never mind that one. Well, maybe it's just hist. No, okay, forget I said that. Um, the point is when you're doing any sort of forking and exec, you have the choices of these commands. Um, you'll find all these on the GitHub again. Um, you, you probably just use these ones or these ones, whatever your preferences. The point I'm showing this is because in the other program, another fork example.py, um, I've got this line here on line five that says os.environ query string equals input. Let's run this for a second. Uh, what's it called? Another book. What is my name? My name is Dylan. And it's pretty much doing the exact same thing as the other program. This one here, parent.py. Uh, we're setting our command to be Python. We're forking. Um, that should probably, I mean, be up here, but it really doesn't matter at all. Child is here. The way I remember it is that when a child is born, they're age zero, just like their PID. So everything in here is the child. Everything in here is an error. You got to look at what's actually being checked in the year statement. And everything here is the parent. And let's talk this through for a sec. So we call our fork, we've got our process, we split. That's our fork. That's why it's called a fork, because we, we fork it. We're going to go os.exec le to l, no brackets, and e include environment variables. We'll probably get rid of that one there. So we're saying run Python 3 or slash bin slash Python 3, run child.py and pass these environment variables to it. Uh, and as we know, nothing below it will get run. So this one, we can just sort of delete. It doesn't do anything. So let's run it. We ran it already. And we can see environment variables do work. Query string equals Dylan. So when it execs and it runs child.py, you can see it hits this try. Uh, and there's no key error because um, os.environ does have this set. It's just like doing, um, let's use the same query string equals Dylan, like that. And then you can go echo query string and you can see it's Dylan. It's exact same process as doing that. Um, and this is how we can pass variables to one another. Uh, it's not a super common way of doing it. A more common way is to use pipes to communicate, but just uh, to show you to explore the different exec family of commands. Um, again, you can see I did my little bit of math here, um, and I call it ret value, and you can see that I, I put it in here. Uh, and you can get also the first one of this tuple that we saw before is the process ID of the child, um, which would be this one here, the one that gets exact. Um, so if you have any questions about any of this, please email me, uh, post on ed. This uh, is kind of crucial to understand. Uh, work your way through it, do some examples, um, code up a bunch of stuff, see what works, doesn't work, play around with it. This is going to be really important for later on. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now. Um, but again, Please email me if you don't understand and we'll have a chat. Okay, I uh, hope that was good. Bye.